Chapter 25 from Freak the Mighty. What Loretta said. That was a year ago. I hid in the down under for days and days and kept the door closed, which is why I missed the funeral and the fair Gwen going away. Graham told me about it afterwards, how she couldn't stand to live in the house with Kevin gone and who could blame her. Grim threatened to unscrew my bedroom door, but he never did. He just kept saying I should come out for Graham's sake. And sometimes she'd come down and say I should come out for Grim's sake. And so on and so forth until finally I gave up and came out. I don't know if this makes sense, but for a long time I felt like I was a balloon. And somebody had let the air out of me. I didn't care if I ever got the air back because what does it really matter if we're all going to die in the end? That's how down I was feeling and sorry for myself. Grim tried to tell me it isn't how long you've got that matters. It's what you do with the time you have. But that sounded so lame and puny next to freak dying that I just didn't want to hear it. This one day just before school was supposed to start, I was moping around the backyard and thinking again how pointless and stupid everything was. And Grim comes over and says, you know what? Most of us go all the way through life and never have a friend like Kevin, so maybe you should count yourself lucky. Yeah, right, I say. Well, suit yourself, he says. But let's get one thing straight. You're going back to school if I have to hitch a rope to the bumper and drag you there. Is that clear? So I went, and I hated every minute of it. And I especially hated how people kept feeling sorry for me as if it was me who died. Finally, one time, even Tony D came up to me and said it was a shame what happened, and I could see that he really meant it. And I just blew up and told him if he ever felt sorry for me again, I'd put him head first in the mill pond and pound him down into the mud like a fence post. So we're enemies again, which is just the way I like it. Not too long after that, this was winter by then, I saw Loretta Lee in the street. She still had on the neck brace, and you could smell booze on her breath, but what do you expect? A miracle just because she lost her head and acted good for a couple of minutes? Anyhow, Loretta sees me, and she says, Well, did you hear about Gwen? She's in California, and she's got a new boyfriend. His name is Rick, and they're crazy about each other. Ain't that good news? I guess so. Take it from me, she says. It is. So what are you doing these days? Nothing. She gives me this long look and she goes, Nothing is a drag, kid. Think about it. I thought about it all the way home. That night I pulled the pyramid box from under the bed and got the empty book out of the pyramid. And I'm thinking, Who are you kidding, Maxwell Kane? You haven't got a brain, and that's the truth. The whole truth, the unvanquished truth, is how Freak would say it. So I wrote the unvanquished truth stuffed down. And then kept on going for months and months until it was spring again. And the world was really and truly green all over. By the time we got here, which I guess should be the end, feeling okay about remembering things. And now that I've written a book, who knows, I might even read a few. No big deal.